Hi, this is JP Argenziano from Naples, Italy, and um, it's my great pleasure to be with you today speaking about facial and non-facial lentiginous melanoma. What is a lentiginous melanoma? Well, uh, these are two examples of lentiginous melanoma. On the left side, we, we know the, the classic lentigo maligna. Uh, we call it lentigo maligna when it's uh, melanoma in situ on uh, su uh, severely sun-damaged skin especially on the face, and we call it lentigo maligna melanoma when uh, we are speaking about invasive, um, invasive melanoma of, uh, um, of the sun-damaged skin. Uh, on non-chronically sun-damaged skin, we have a, a different type of uh, litigious melanoma, which is the one you can see on the right side. Uh, uh, on the shoulder of a um, uh, middle-aged woman. And uh, here you see an example. You see, uh, it's a, an asymmetric lesion, clinically, demoscopically typified by an atypical network and uh, regress regressive features like uh, white scar like areas. In this case, no uh, melanophages uh, too much. But basically, uh, lentiginous melanoma is a quite... Uh, um, a new entity, newly defined entity. You know, uh, a few years ago we published uh, together with Gerardo Ferrara a couple of papers on this particular issue, and uh, 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 lentiginous melanoma is a special type of uh, melanoma. Uh, uh, from a morphologic point of view, but also on a, from a biological point of view. Um, from an histopathologic point of view, it's a proliferation of, uh, of the skin, usually found in the elderly, um, histopathologically characterized by a predominant single cell proliferation at the dermo-epidermal junction, as you can see here, with little pagetoid spread and regular retiform epidermal hyperplasia. Okay, and uh, already in the past, a few authors noted that lentiginous melanoma arises in non sun exposed areas but shares with lentigo maligna some of the uh, classic histopathologic features. Uh, so basically, lentiginous melanoma is. Uh, uh, is what is a lentigo, it's basically a lentigo maligna, which is not uh, located on the face, but it's located on uh, on the trunk, on the limbs, so on in on non uh, chronically sun damaged uh, areas of the skin. And this is the original uh, case we published um, together with this uh, with this paper showing uh, basically the histopathologic features that I uh, that I mentioned before um, I told you that uh, lentiginous melanoma is a special type of uh, melanoma not only morphologically clinically demoscopically histopathologically but also it's a special type of biological tumor it's a different type of tumor it's a it's a type of melanoma which we call, we decided to call a few years ago, slow growing melanoma. Okay, slow growing melanoma, meaning that this is a kind of more benign type of melanoma. It's growing very, very slowly. Okay, it's, it, it, it's, um, uh, exhibiting basically a very, uh, a very long history of superficial uh, growth, you know, just in the epidermis, and in just it takes very long uh, to um, to progress and eventually metastasize. And as you can see here on the table on the on the left side, uh, the most common uh, demoscopic features of this type of uh, lentiginous melanoma is the reticular pattern in uh, present in more than uh, sixty percent of cases, and regression structures present in uh, more than thirty five percent of cases. So this is the morphologic phase of lentiginous melanoma. Okay, non facial lentiginous melanoma. So again, it's a uh, it's a basically a lentigo maligna, not located on the face, but located on the trunk or on the limbs, and typified biologically by, by a very slow-growing um, uh, biologic attitude. Okay. So concerning the diagnosis, uh, how can we make the diagnosis? Well, when in a case like this, it's very simple. It's a solitary lesion. Usually, it's a large lesion, irregular, ABCD positive. Okay, so as you can see here, it's a jumping into our, into our, our eye. And demoscopically, there are basically two types, two predominant features. First, a kind of irregular network, irregular, some, somehow prominent network, in, especially in this area here of the lesion, and regression structures. So basically, uh, all these... Um, 
uh, areas on the right side, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, regression structures. Okay, here another example on the abdomen of a middle-aged woman. Uh, again, a large lesion, irregular, ABCD positive, and uh, again, demoscopically typified by irregular network and regression structures. Here, by the way, you can see uh, the classic features we can also see on the face, like rhomboidal structures. For example, here, you can see remnants of rhomboidal structures, like uh, uh, in this area here, but also a little bit here. And, you know, these uh, irregular pigmented follicular openings, eh? uh, gray circles. Uh, these are small, tiny gray circles. And also, one of these um, typical uh, uh, melanoma clues of facial melanoma, which is the circle within the circle. So you have a, a small follicular opening in the center and a larger uh, a circle uh, at the periphery. So these are, we will speak about these features in a, in, in a few minutes. By the way, so this is a lentiginous melanoma of the trunk, but really exhibiting the same features that as we, we can see on the on facial melanoma. Okay. Well, so in these two particular cases I showed you before, uh, the diagnosis was pretty easy. Uh, it could be a little bit more difficult when we are dealing with a patient with with uh, uh, heavily sun damaged skin so you can see a lots lots of uh, uh, solar lentigos seborrheic keratosis then the, the eventual melanoma can be uh, you know hiding a little bit among the many other benign features in this particular case the melanoma is here as you can see it uh, it's it's more uh, you know prominent the pigmentation is more prominent it's more irregular but by the way it could be confounded uh, among the many other lesions uh, dermoscopically by the way it's pretty simple in this particular case uh, again you see a combination of irregular network and regression features okay so Basically, that's the uh, situation here. In my view, this is the, the worst case of, of the ones I, I presented to you because it's a melanoma uh, arising on the skin of a patient full of seborrheic keratosis and solar lentigos. You know? So again, uh, the benign lesions can in some way be a confounding, a confounding um, a clinical uh, situation in which you know you are uh, you don't expect expect to find a melanoma because of the many benign lesions. By the way, the melanoma is again quite strikingly strikingly seen here as a heavily pigmented lesion. And again, demoscopically, if you put your dermatoscope on the skin on the lesion, then it's uh, much more easy. Of course, here we have no features of a seborrheic keratosis, but instead we have again an, a, a prominent and irregular network and areas of regression. In this particular case, what is predominant is not anymore the white skull-like areas of the of regression, but mel the pepper-like granules of representing melanophages of the regression structures, okay? So that's basically concerning lentiginous melanoma. Uh, lentiginous melanoma, of course, can be seen on the trunk, but it, it can be seen also on the limbs. Uh, here, another example uh, found on the limbs. Again, as you can see here, a uh, combination of uh, atypical network and regression structures. Uh, and by the way, of course, it's pretty easy to distinguish based on the morphology that I showed you before, to distinguish lentiginous melanoma from the conventional melanoma. Eh? Conventional melanoma like this one here, which is completely different as you can see. Here we don't see uh, too much network. There is a little bit, by the way, but not so much. What is predominant here is this irregular blotches and irregular dots and globules, which are uh, telling the story, which, which are telling the story that this is a more uh, uh, a conventional melanoma, biologically not anymore so uh, lazy like lentiginous melanoma. Okay, so in this particular case, this melanoma is more aggressive, is, is biologically more uh, dynamic. Okay.